application of the blue charm um, uh, so the hook uh, that I'm going to be tying on is the Arex uh, bomber hook this one size 2 um, the thread I'm going to be using is uni 801 white so I'll begin by putting a bit of wax on the thread and I'll start a few mil behind the hook eye the uh, rib I'm going to be using is Vineyard uh, oval tinsel this is number 14 so I'll take a length of that and I'm just going to catch that in on the side a couple of turns to secure I've actually positioned this so that it helps to bridge the little uh, step created by the wires that bends back onto the shank so I'll take the thread down the hook shank and I'm going to take it down to approximately the hook point about the, yeah about there come back up uh, a few mil I'm going to take the oval tinsel and I'm going to give it maybe three, four wraps. So that's four. Just catch that in. A couple of turns just to secure. And Trim away the excess. Next, I'm going to take some uh, yellow floss, uni floss. I'm going to split this. I think when it's split into one length like this, it's it, it wraps just that bit better and easier to keep flat. So I'm going to tie that in on the top, and this is going to be the little length that's used to protect the the uh, floss from I suppose falling off the back of the hook so take a second length tie this in on the side a couple of wraps just to secure that and just take the floss making sure this first turn is nice and neat and flush against the oval tinsel so I'm going to take that forward keeping it nice and flat take it back again try and fill in any bumps, gaps and forward one last time just catch that in and pull this little cut end over the top and secure on top and that floss is essentially not going to move off the back of the hook I'm going to trim this trim this other length um, a little bit further up just to help aid taper I'm going to take my thread forward and I'm going to run up the hook shank And just take it back down again. Perfect. Just check that everything's sitting nicely. A little bump there, I'm just going to smooth it out. That's fine. So next I'm going to take um, two golden pheasant crest fellers and I'm going to basically sit one on top of the other this will help just give uh, I suppose a bit more volume to the tail so just line those up just line them up I'm just going to take 
So I'm going to take the tail now and set it on top and just measure it up for length. I like to come a, a, a bit too far, I suppose, and then if I need, need to, I can sort of pull the tail back, back into the desired length. So just pinch and loop on top. A couple of turns to secure. Take a look. It's a little bit long for my liking, so I'll just slide that forward. It's a bit better. And just a little bit shorter. Pull that forward. And that looks fine to me. So I'll just take the uh, thread up the shank, securing the crest fellers in. And again, I'm going to cut these two stalks a slightly different lengths, just the eight taper. That's fine. Take my thread on up the hook shank. Just make sure that tail's sitting how I want it to sit. A couple of little stray fibers there I'm just going to remove. Looks okay. I find if you if you rub the if you kind of twist the the fibers like this with your thumb and forefinger, you can kind of roll them in the shape, and the tail will set that bit better for you. So I'm going to take another length of oval tinsel, and I'm just going to catch that in on the side. And next I'm going to take a length of black uh, floss. This is uni floss. And catch that in on the side. And take my thread back down the hook shank. fine just take a look just to make sure things are sitting properly and take my thread back up the hook shank and just tidy up the head area that's fine I take the floss and I'm just going to flatten it out slightly just set that out of the way just flatten that out slightly and then keeping a bit of tension on it I'm going to wrap the floss forward and just make sure this first turn um, is nice and straight which it is and then in slightly overlapping turns and bring the floss black back up the body just take your time at this point just to make sure the body is wrapping properly nothing worse than big bumps bumps and bumps on the on the uh, the body when you're finished and you take a look so take that right up to this point and just catch that in a couple of turns this is just to secure that and just trim away the waste tidy up Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna whip finish this to secure the thread on top and then I'm gonna the ribs gonna the ribs uh, gonna have five turns I'm gonna take this back towards myself five times so that when I ro rotate the vise um, that will unwrap again so I'm just gonna 
to get the right sort of angle take the vise and simply rotate it to lay down a rib and doing it like this helps to keep the rib turns um, fairly evenly spaced so I'm aiming for four or five turns here and that's sat nicely five five turns on on my side um, I have four and a bit on your side but that looks okay <coughs> so I'll just catch that in and just trim away the excess just tidy up I'm just going to change the thread here to black at this point it pays just to use white thread obviously um, for the first section so the yellow floss doesn't uh, darken down too much when the fly is wet so I'm just going to take a hen hackle this is a genetic hen uh, blue so I'll just select the appropriate feather and just strip away the fluff at the bottom and I'm just going to prepare the tip and just trim that slightly and remove some of these uh, hackle fibers again I did this in a previous video this is worth doing because it just helps reduce bulk so that's what I'm aiming for and just catch that in a couple of turns forward fold the cut end back and a couple of turns back just to secure take my scissors and just trim that little cut end so I'm going to run the scissors along the leading edge of the hackle and do the same on the other side and that'll be fine I think that'll be fine yeah lick the fingers stroke the hackle fibers back and I'm going to give this one two three turns just make sure that's sitting properly close together which it is and just catch that catch that in and strip away some of these hackle fibers again um, to help aid or reduce bulk when we come forward with the thread here just to secure the the hackle stock in place a bit of wax on the thread just for extra grip and just trim away the waste that's fine that's okay so next um, I'm going to select some bronze mallard um, I'm going to select two slips from from each side um, so this is uh, the left side and this is going to be um, for uh, it's going to sit my side on the fly so I'll just take a second length and I'm just going to set these one on top of the other making sure that the tips are properly lined up take your time at this point um, the more attention you pay to getting the wings sat in the right position before you try and mount it the easier it's going to be and, and just go with it pays not to fight this too much so that's what it looks like um, and that, as I say that's going to be my side and I'm just going to prepare the two sets line them up like so 
that's the underside you can see and that's from the top so again take your time just make sure these are lined up widthwise and lengthwise make sure the tips are even a bit more wax on the thread you don't want anything slipping at this point so I'm just going to measure these up for length and keeping a firm grip with the uh, with my finger and thumb here firm grip at this point with the right hand line that up for length you can have it slightly shorter than the tail slightly longer I like it just level so just set the feathers on top of the hook make sure everything is evenly matched and then take a look at this point that looks okay so applying quite a bit of pressure now with the thumb and forefinger on my left hand secure those fillers and come over with a soft loop and back underneath again and pull up keeping pressure on the mallard fillers a couple more turns just to secure that just to make sure nothing's going to move and then have a look moment of truth yeah and that's sitting fine that's that's okay so I'm just going to apply a bit of uh, super glue to the thread, a couple of wraps of this and, and that should seep in, the super glue will seep into the mallard fillers and really nothing's going to move at that point. It's nothing worse than finishing your wing and things slip and you're back to square one. So I'm just going to nudge these uh, feather ends up slightly so I can come in underneath with the scissors. And just trim them away. So just take your time. Make sure you cut these, uh, cut the feather right in as tight as you can to the head, and that's okay. A bit more super glue, and this is going to seep into those uh, cut ends. So just Go to the front and make your way back up the head. And that looks fine. So this is uh, Mandarin Duck Bard, Mandarin Duck Flank Feathers. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to take one uh, from each side, so a feather on each side. Normally the this the blue charm has pintail or mallard or uh, similar feathers for you know for sides, but I I think this mandarin um, uh, the barred mandarin feather looks really really nice. So take a slip on the other side. I'm just going to take that and manipulate the feather slightly so it's 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 going to sit better. And I'm just going to line that up for length. Yeah, again, you can have this whatever length you want. Um, that looks okay to me. So a couple of turns of thread just to secure that. That looks okay. And now for, for your side. So I'll just take that away. And again, manipulate the feather slightly to get it to sit nice. I'm going to line this out. Now this, looking at this, I think this is going to be a bit on the short side. Yep, 
yeah much too short so I'm going to take that away and I'm going to try that again so I'm going to take a, a longer slip this time from further down the, the feller that looks a bit better so line that up with the slip on the on, on my side making sure they're the same length line those up pinch and loop and just remove this stray fiber come over and a couple of wraps to secure that see how that's looking that looks okay just going to move this slightly it's perfect Take my scissors and trim away the cut ends. Again, just go slow at this point. There's really no hurry. And the only way to keep things super neat is to take your time. So a bit more super glue on the thread. And um, we're going to come in and build the head up slightly. And if you slightly zigzag these uh, thread wraps, I think you get a nicer head shape. Just going to stick a bit more wax on that just for grip. and build the head up see how that's sitting that looks okay yep that's fine so I'm just gonna Come in and whip finish. Trim away. Take another drop of super glue and by a nice even coat right the way around this is going to be a strong head because we've 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 built it up slowly at each stage applying super glue so it's going to be strong um, from from the hook essentially right out to where we're going to varnish so the entire width of the head is going to be nice and strong depth of the head Another little drop here, just to build that up, build the shape of the head. And that'll dry pretty quickly. Once that's dry, um, I then apply a couple of coats of Sally Hansen uh, nail varnish. So I'm just going to use my little blade here just to remove any varnish from the front of the head and try and encourage a nice shape at the front that looks okay there's a couple of um, fibers at the top I don't like there See if I can possibly pick those out. Doesn't want to play ball. Another few stray fibers here at the side. 
I like to, um, I suppose, tidy up this area. Um, it just creates a much a much nicer wing if you take the time to remove any stray fibers. Unless, of course, it's purely efficiently and it doesn't really matter. But I like these. I like the flies to be as neat as possible. So I'll come at that with the scissors instead. Yep. And just cut that away. That's much better. So yeah, that looks good. Happy with that. I hope you liked that. I hope you got some enjoyment and I suppose picked up a few tips from it. Um, Ron's Mallard, I think it's better if you learn not to fight with it and just take your time and practice, practice, obviously. And it then becomes, I suppose, second nature. That's yeah, that's that's fine. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, thank you for watching.